This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, this is the Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Dice, coming all the way live from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via Think Tech Hawaii in Honolulu, Hawaii. So the people that are catching this live uh, in Hawaii, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, share button, follow us here on Think Tech Hawaii every other Friday. People that's catching the playback, maybe on the podcast, YouTube channel, I have you made catches across the globe. Don't forget to uh, hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button. But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely, you guys and girls, don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So this video is going to be, as you, as you guys and girls can see in the description box, this video is going to be about 529 plans and Coverdale plans, uh, Coverdale ESA, which is Educational Savings Account. Educational Savings Account. So... Um, so we're going to talk about the 529 plans. We're going to talk about the Coverdale ES3. So we're going to talk about what are they, the difference between them, um, the pros and cons of each, and how they break out, and you kind of see which one better funds you. But let's first start off with what the heck are, is even the Coverdale or the 529, why are we even comparing Both of these are what we know as college plans. We all know that one day we want to send our kids, children's nephews, nieces to college one day. That's everybody's dream, right? or some way of further education. So a lot of us, we don't think about that until we're like, you know, junior year, high school, sophomore year, high school, you're like, wow, my kid is very smart, and they're asking for college money, and I don't have it. So what you want to do is to increase the time horizon. Time horizon is how long you plan to invest. When you increase your time horizon, instead of waiting until the child is a sophomore, maybe you start when they are at birth. As soon as they get a Social Security number, you can start a college plan for them. Now, um, you sort of cost plan for them, that gives you more time of compounding interest, that gives you more time to invest, and that gives you more time for your for you to earn more money. Now, Prince, okay, you know why? I'm buying stocks for my kid. I am um, investing in real estate. I have a business for them. Um, i got a savings account for them. Why the heck do I need a college plan? So the first question to answer is why do you need a college plan is, the uh, Coverdale ESA and the 529 plan, both are, they have tax advantages. What I mean by that is, let's say myself, I have a brokerage account, not a brokerage account, I have a custodian account open for my son. I place money in there, I go out and buy him different stocks, whatever stocks does well over time, he earns money, right? Um, he earns money, now he turns 18, 19, 20, I decide to sell those assets, those stocks and whatnot, and to sit on the college or pay for education, help them start a business or whatever. When I do that, I'm going to be subjected to taxes. If I made $10, $20, $30, $40, $50, $1,000, $10, $15, $20, $50, dollars whatever you make, now that money is subject to tax. So what these plans do is they let you put money into it, let the money grow tax-free, and as long as it's used for education, it can be uh, used, as long as it's used for education, you can use the money tax-free. So your money can grow in a little tax shelter or tax haven, some people like to call it. So it's like this little place you can place money. You don't have to worry about taxes. I'm going to go to the pros and cons. So first of all, what is the Coverdale ESA? Coverdale ESA is a form of a college plan, right? If you're single, the, the max level of income you can make to be able to qualify to use one is $110,000. Uh, $110,000 if you're single, $220,000 if you're married, you know, 110 plus 110. The limit you can place on this thing a year is $2,000. Now we're going to kind of switch gears to the 529 plan. The 529 plan literally doesn't have a limit, and it is dictated by your state. The state that you uh, purchased the 529 plan is ran by the state. The state decides that. But um, it can go up to like three hundred and some thousand dollars but it pretty much – uh, pretty much has no limit, unlike the court uh, cover there has a particular limit. So it doesn't have a limit. The uh, second thing about the limit you can put in there, the amount of money you can put in there, you pretty much can put as much money or the amount of money you want to put in there, but you have to be wary of the gift tax. Anything go $14,000 per person. So if you put over $14,000, you could be subject to gift tax. I'm not a CPA, so I'm not going to get dive too in, too in depth with that. 
But if, if you can put way more money into a 529 plan than you can a Coverdale plan, right? So the next thing is uh, a 529 plan can only be used for college, right? For a prime example, your son or daughter wants to become a doctor, a lawyer, a dentist, maybe go to trade school, uh, anything like that. And kind of sidebar for a second, let me sidebar. What I mean by that is a smarter thing that I'm seeing people do, instead of sending their kids go to the University of whatever, Denver, Colorado, whatever, whatever university, and walk into debt, right? The kid is using credit cards, you know, struggle or whatnot. They walk into debt, they walk out of college on $100,000, and they only look for a job. They only can get a job that pays them, you know, $12 an hour, $13 an hour, $15 an hour. So essentially, by the time they are paying back their student loans, you take away their hourly wage, they're making like 12 bucks an hour, when it's like, is it really even worth it? I'm already starting with a ball and chain. So a smart thing that I am seeing people do is that they're going to college and they're going, instead of going to a traditional four-year university, which is very expensive, they're starting off at a community college first. Because the community college is way cheaper. Go to the community college, get an associate degree first, way cheaper, then transfer to a, uh, a community college or a junior college, and then go to a major university and do their sophomore, do their junior and senior years, uh, so it cuts back on price. Another option I've seen people do is this is their kids to tech school to gain a skill first so they can enter the workforce, start earning money to pay for their school so they don't have to get into debt. What I mean by that, things like being a plumber, things like being an electrician, uh, things like being a, maybe a dental assistant, uh, you know, uh, those courses that I offer through technical college. You can go there, take a year, uh, maybe a year and a half or two years, some type of uh, HVAC, HVAC, like an HVAC person. It's like a year some change. They become very good with HVAC. They can start working in the HVAC field instead of working at McDonald's while they're in college making eight, nine, ten dollars an hour. These people are making upwards of to fifteen, twenty dollars, depending on where you live. They're making substantially more amount of money. Now they can pay for their own school to send themselves to school to uh, get a college degree without getting in debt. But that's another subject. But anyway, so you have to use it for college. The five two nine plan you have to use it for some form of college for it to be tax free. If you don't use it for college, now you're going to be subject to tax. Let me take a swig of water here from the Investor Show Cup. Mm. Woo! Round the Colorado Mountain. But anyway, uh, the point is you have to use it for some form of uh, college. You can't use it. If you don't use it for college, let's say if you're saying, hey, you know what? My son was an idiot. He went to jail, and um, I had this money into a 529 plan, and what am I going to do with it now? Now, one of the benefits is you can transfer it to someone else in your family. Transfer it to your son, transfer it to your daughter, uh, you know, your other daughter, your other sibling, a niece or a nephew. You can transfer the money. It doesn't have to just sit there and die. Now, with the uh, Coverdale ESA plan, you must – Establish it before the child is 18, before they're 18, and it must be used by the time they're 30, right? Uh, you must establish it before they're 18, and it must be used by the time they're 30. And it's the same way. You have to use it on um, college as well. If you don't use it on college, you can pay like a 10% penalty, and you have to pay a 10% penalty. And you could uh, – not only do you have to pay a 10% penalty, you have to pay taxes on the money that you use if you don't use it for college, right? One second. I thought I had to squeeze it up for a second. So what you do is uh, now another thing, a 529 plan, you don't have to use it for college expenses. That means if your kid goes off to college, son or daughter goes off to college, you have to use it for college expenses. Now, uh, for a Coverdale plan, you can use it for a private school. You can use it from K through 12. You want to send the kids to private school. Maybe you want to, you know, that's kind of like the biggest thing I know people do with uh, uh, using it from K through 12. And the other thing is the Coverdale plan, you have more options. You can almost use it like an IRA. You know, you can go open up an IRA with TD Ameritrade, Scott Trade, and buy stock that you pick. You can do that with a Coverdale ESA, but you cannot do that with a 529 plan. When you get a 529 plan, the state already have investments that it wants you to go into. Right, 
I'm going to get into the pros and the cons at the end. So the, the state has, oh, well, this is going to be this. We have seven funds, choose from the seven funds. That sort of deal. So you don't have that much control. Then some people are saying, well, I don't need that much control. So, you know, that that depends. Um, now, also, the 529 plan, you can start it at any age and can be used at any age. So you can start it whenever you want to and you can use it at any age. You can give it to any beneficiary you want to. But the Coverdale ESA, you don't have that option. Now, the other thing you have to think of is with the Coverdale uh, plan, right? Different, let, let's, let's break it down and say, Prince, well, what, do you, what would you do, right? Me, personally, I'm not big on either one of the college plans. This is why, because um, from what I know and see, it, it's good, it's better than nothing. Also, something's always better than nothing. But I don't like to be pigeonheeled to what do I have to spend the money on. So what is qualifying for education? Let's say your son, let's say my son wants to start a business. You know, say your son or daughter wants to start a business, and they want to, you know, use the money that you saved up to buy X, Y, Z. Yes, I get tax breaks, but I don't like that fall and chain kind of like, hey, you don't have to use it for this, you don't have to use it for that, right? So I don't like that. Um, the second thing is, I don't like. Um, the second thing is. I don't like the um, on the 529 plan. These particular funds, I looked at some uh, some of the funds, and their fees were ridiculous, right? I mean, the fees were astronomical. And the reason I don't say they're astronomical is because I'm comparing them to other uh, fees that I see out there. For prime example, uh, the index fund that I purchased, some index funds are now zero. I heard Fidelity has zero fund index, but they're not open to other platforms. So I, I can't see him. But I know there's a Charles, is it Charles Schwab? I think it's Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab in this fund is like 0 .02, 0 .02. Um, and I've looked at some of the uh, 529 plans. I looked at some of the expenses. Cause, you know, it's different from every state. This can't be every state. It has to have changed from the two years ago that I looked at it. Um, but last time I looked at it, some of those things were charging 0.67. That's like someone who's charging you two cents versus someone who's charging you sixty-seven cents. So that's crazy, right? Um, you know, so I mean that's crazy when you look at the funds. So uh, you know, looking at the fees, I didn't like the fee structure. They were pretty much the same funds you can get from anywhere else. So I didn't like the fee structure that I saw in the five two nine plan. Coverdale, it's not bad, you know, that you can put money into it. And uh, don't and you can direct it. I like that aspect. But I, you know, what if my son or daughter doesn't want to go to college, right? What so if they want to start a business? They want to, you know, they want to get real estate. They, you know, I really want to get a real estate license. I think yeah, it'll pay for your professional license. But so they say, hey, I want to get a real estate. Then you have thirty thousand dollars saved up for me, and I want to get a real estate license, and I want to buy my first property, right? If they say that, I want to get a real estate license and buy my first property, what do you do? You know, if you have that college fund that, just, that, that doesn't qualify, that I want to start my own business or whatever, you can't do that with uh, either one of the college funds. But if you save up your own money, you have a custodian account, yes, you're going to have to pay taxes, but it's free on what that child can be able to do. And you probably can put it in a way to where since it's in his name, it can go to his tax level, which could be little to nothing, versus your tax level, which could be wherever you're at in life, could be, you know, astronomical. So I don't like the ball and chain on, hey, this is what you can do with the money. It only can be used for this or this or whatnot. And also, uh, college funds, I know people were kind of speaking about this. It could affect your ability to get financial aid because, you know, financial aid is there to aid people financially not for someone who's privileged enough to have someone who looks out for them at a young age or whatnot. So those are two different things that I look at the core the Corbell plan and also the 529 plan. Great plans. They're better than nothing. Uh, you have tax advantages as far as, hey, if I went out and saved up my own money or I purchased a house for this person or whatever the case may be, you do have investment vehicles that can go that can grow tax-free. Think about your money growing tax-free Instead of paying money on the royalties or whatever the case may be, you could be earning money over time. 
Now, the other thing, um, the other thing that I, I mean, so uh, if I had to lean towards one person, personally, personally, the most possible one I did that you always hear of is a 529 plan because it has unlimited on how much income you make that you qualify for. Um, it also, you can use it as the child goes to college. It has no limit on it. But the downside is, depending on what state you file in, you can only be subject to so many uh, so many investments. That's my downside. And now the other Cor Corel plan, Coverdale plan, Coverdale plan, what I like about it is self-directing. I can pick out investments. I can buy stocks. I can do whatever I want to do to grow the money just like I would do in a self-directed IRA. Now, the downside to that is you only can put $2,000 in a year to a, co a Coverdale plan, and also it has you only can make $100,000 $110,000 if you're a single person, $200,000 if you're married, filing jointly. The only uh, downside to that is it has to be used by the time a child is 30, and it has to be started by, the, by their 18. So I don't like the age. I'm not a big fan of the age restrictions, uh, the income restrictions, and, of course, for either one of them, I don't like the uh, the plan as far as being able to go to college. You know, the kid has to go to college. You never know what your kid may grow up into or may become interested in or whatnot. They may want to, you know, like I said, one of the things is, you know, a lot of people want to become entrepreneurs and things like that. So, you know, but those are things. This episode and, like, this whole platform is here to educate you on what is out there. So you know what you have out there as far as you know that, hey, you know what? I heard this guy, this Google leading guy, was talking about a Coverdale plan and a 529 plan and a college plan. What exactly is a college plan that's different from what I'm already doing? You know, I'm already purchasing this for my son, or I'm, I'm already, I already have a savings account. It beats a savings account because it is, it's, it is an investment in vehicle. So you can invest. So, and it beats a custodian account in a way because it beats a custodian account because of the tax. You have a custodian account. Like I do for my son, I buy stock like you guys do all the time. It doesn't mean that he, um, just because he has a custodian account, um, he will still have to pay tax on him. So you get tax advantages from it, and that's the only good thing. But either way, both of them, you're going to have to use it exactly for college. And that's one of my big things. Like, mm, what if, what if, what if, what if? I don't like that red tape on my money. So anyway, it's just like my... IRA, my 401k, you know, I'm 59 and a half. I want the government to say, hey, you can use your money that you saved and invested, and but you only can use it for food and clothes. What? Well, what if I want to buy a car or I want to go do X, Y, Z or I want to start a business, whatever. I think that's, that's your money. You saved it. You invested it. It should, yes, definitely theoretically go to your college uh, savings, but what if your kid doesn't want to go to college? A lot of people are not doing that these days. So I, I like the freedom. Well, and I like the government to say, hey, you're going to get charged 10% and taxes and this and this if you do this or whatever. So that's just me. But anyway, that's going to conclude this, <laughs> this episode, the 529 plan versus the Coverdale plan. I hope you guys took something away from it, from the people that are catching the audio experience on the podcast, to the people that are catching it live to the people that are catching the playback or however you make catches around the globe. But as always, this is the Prince of Investing. My name is Prince Geist. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, book, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe. Oh, yeah, before I get out of here, I'm not going to say it. I'll wait till we have another time. But anyway, <laughs> peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.